What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and welcome back to part two in a four part series about how to start using SaaS right now. In the first video, we talked about how to install SaaS, get it up and running in your project, and then use some simple nesting to make your life 10 times easier. And in this video, we're gonna be focusing on variables and mix-ins. Let's get to it. Okay, so jumping right in on variables and mixins. These are two really powerful features of SaaS that are gonna allow you to keep your code really, really dry. Don't repeat yourself, be really efficient, really productive with what you do, um, and be able to make global changes really quickly, which is what cascading style sheets are supposed to be all about. But as they cascade, they become a little bit arduous. This makes them a little less tedious. So we're gonna dive right in and I'll show you what I mean. On the left hand side, you can see uh, I've updated our code so that uh, our backgrounds are sharing a lot of the same color and uh, as are like this color and this border. So you could almost say that we have like a primary color and like an accent color maybe fictitiously in our, in our project. And as I press save, you can see those are kind of processed out and we can see how many times those colors are repeated. This is eight lines of code and they're already repeated over and over and over. Imagine 800 lines of code. That's like a lot of things to change if you need to tweak something, right? So um, SAS allows you to create variables, which we're gonna talk about first. Variables are exactly what they sound like. If you know JavaScript or any other programming language, you're able to store some information inside of a variable and reuse that variable over and over and over. So we could create a variable and you do that by putting in the dollar sign, right? And then you name your variable. So we're gonna call this one primary. We're gonna put a colon and then we'll just, uh, we'll copy our hex value for our color, for, the, for our reddish color into there. And next we're gonna do another one. We're gonna do dollar sign and we'll do an accent color. We'll put our colon and we'll move our accent kind of color up into that variable. Now we've stored information. If we press save, nothing's gonna happen. The inf information is saved over here in SAS, but it's not recognized here until it's used, right? So we're gonna come in and just take our variable name, that's primary, and anywhere where we saw that primary color, we could just replace it with primary. Let's press Command S and see what happens. Perfect, okay, like so we don't see any change and we shouldn't see any change. And we'll do the same thing for our accent variable. We'll just drop those into our accent areas, okay? So nothing's changing over here. That's because we've assigned the correct variables. But what happens if your client comes back later and says, hey, we don't want our primary color to be that red color, but we want it to be maybe something like this green color. Well, instead of replacing everything, all you have to do is replace the variable and it updates over there in the CSS. So you can see how quickly you can make global changes by storing all these variables. You can have variables for all sorts of things, colors, fonts, different CSS properties um, that you can reuse over and over and over. Now variables are really great for storing one piece of information in CSS, but what if you need to store multiple pieces of information? Well then you'd want to use a mixin. A mixin is like a variable on steroids. It's able to store multiple pieces of CSS code and then reuse those whenever you apply that mixin right? You're kind of mixing all the things in together to make one recipe. So that's the idea. To write a mixin, you in the SCSS uh, syntax, you would write at mixin. Um, but that's kind of long, right? So in the SASS, this is why I prefer SAS over SCSS, um, you just have to write an equal sign, which is really, really nice. So we're going to name our mixin. And let's say we wanted to give something a border radius. This is kind of a common pattern that you would do because a border radius uh, is something that needs vendor prefixing for Microsoft and for um, I think WebKit and so instead of writing border radius three different times to designate all those vendor prefixes what if we just wrote border radius that'd be really nice so in after you write the name which is border radius the name of the mixin you're going to open us and close a set of parentheses and inside there you're going to put a parameter so for us we can call that a variable called uh, radius okay and then underneath as we just kind of like indent in we want to write all of those vendor prefixes um, so that we can gracefully degrade the code down to just border radius right so let's do that if you're gonna apply a border radius uh, property to some sort of CSS selector or lots of them, you'd have to write all three of those over and over. 
well, we've created this radius parameter. Why don't we just apply that radius parameter to each one of these different kind of like applications of border radius. Now, later on, like for instance, over here in our article, if we wanted to give that a border radius, instead of using the equal sign, we can use, just use the plus symbol, which says, hey, we're gonna now add this mix in, and it's the mix in called border radius, and we wanna make sure that all of those border radiuses are 10 pixels, right? We're gonna press Command S and save. So you can see it's stored all the information and it's applied that parameter inside of that mix-in over into every aspect of those vendor prefixes. This is really, really similar if you're used to JavaScript or another programming language or you're allowed to apply parameters to any method or function that you create. It makes it really, really nice to reuse that, that mix in over and over and over. So this is just one application, but there's lots of different ways you can apply mix ins. They're super powerful and super helpful and really, really smooth to write. Well, that's it. That's variables and that's mix ins. And I have to apologize because I have just officially ruined CSS for you. You will never want to go back and write normal CSS after you start implementing variables and mix ins and everything you do because it's just, it's a game changer. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for part three where you talk about partials and imports and start growing your code base and blowing your mind even more. See you next time.